Today we're going to be talking about vehicle management, last but not the least out of the seven criteria points when you're doing your driving assessment. So under vehicle management there are a fair few aspects that you've got to understand and obviously you've got to implement when, when you're doing your driving assessment. Now firstly when you sit behind the wheel you've got to be seated properly. So how do we put our body in the position so we can reach all the controls without having any major troubles reaching them. You've got to be able to reach all the controls properly but also you, you make sure your wrists can reach the top of the steering wheel. So if I'm a little bit further I might bring the seat a little bit more forward. So this is just a guide. We had an argument not long ago with somebody who was claiming that you know you've got to explain that you know you've got to reach the controls but you know not all the people have the same length of their arms and legs you know so you've got to understand that the best position for any driver to reach all the controls all the switches and, and everything that's necessary is if your wrists can roughly reach the top of the steering wheel without leaning forward okay so that's about right there okay you've got to make sure that your both hands are on the steering wheel on the outside of the rim at about 10 to 2 position on the clock you're not allowed to steer from the inside so i never understood personally how somebody can find that easier because it's not it's far more difficult so when you're driving as well you've got to make sure that everything's in the proper sort of order you know when you're doing things and you know obviously a lot of things will come under vehicle management how you operate your switches and everything else how you're steering so you can't palm your steering wheel either so when you're steering you've got to steer with both hands unless you're operating any of the switches such as indicator switch or you know uh, window wiper or similar so when you're steering you don't have to push pull like in that sort of motion but make making sure that every you know that you have your hands on the steering wheel at least one at the time okay so when you're steering when you're cruising you've got to make sure that you have them both on the steering wheel the best position is to have your thumbs on the rim and to release the pressure in your elbows a lot of times people don't understand that you know they've got to make sure that the elbows must be loosened up so you know that's one of the aspects that a lot of people do wrong because if you do that you will definitely 100% be marked for your vehicle management because you cannot steer properly like that because you'd be too firm and also if you have your hands down the bottom of the steering wheel because then your ability to steer adequately will be impaired. One more thing that you've got to understand when you're driving a motor vehicle you shouldn't have any loose objects particularly on the dashboard but also in the in, in the back seat or anywhere in the car because if that loose object can get your attention while you're driving and if, if you try to reach to you know to save something from crashing if you reach for something to to grab it it's obviously going to impact your driving and your steering and obviously keeping an eye on the road so make sure when you sit in a car with the examiner you don't put your logbook or whatever you might have your keys or you know phone whatever it might be on the dashboard so nothing can be loose on the dashboard it's as simple as that it is a driver's responsibility to make sure that everyone's wearing seat belts in saying that when you're in the driving assessment the examiner will not trick you and they shouldn't do that by not putting the seat belt on and trying to get you to intercept what's what's wrong so you know they do not do that make sure that your doors are closed you know and and that the handbrake is uh, completely released when you you know when you take off so if any of the dashboard lights any of the warning lights are on whether they're orange or red lights you've got to attend it okay so you've got to understand if your door is partially open that your door light will definitely show that it's open or if your handbrake is up or even if it's just partially on it wouldn't necessarily be catching and braking but it would carry the same amount of points they will not fail you immediately but they will definitely give you at least about 30 seconds to address it if you fail to do that they may terminate your driving assessment vehicle management is mainly common sense for example if it starts to rain you are expected 
to switch on the wipers or if if it's you know dusk and you know obviously you should put the headlights on the uh, regulation in, in the metropolitan area is when the street lights come on you should turn your headlights on as well but you can you can tell by other drivers you can tell by the visibility it's not only because you don't see a lot of people think you've got to put the headlights on because your visibility is not as as it, as it was like half an hour ago no it's because of other drivers any vehicle is easier to intercept by other road users if you have your headlights on so steering and gearing is important so you know when you're turning make sure that uh, you don't palm steering wheel what i mean by palming palming would be this so you're not supposed to do that when you're changing gears don't have your hand constantly on the gear knob so have your hands on the steering wheel unless you're changing gears so you know only when you change a lot of times examiners mark people who haven't had any professional lessons for leaning on the gear knob and keeping the hand all the time on the gear knob it is not necessary okay so have your hands on the steering wheel while you're driving make sure that you do it only when you're changing gears and uh, simply just try to make sure that you continue doing that until your driving test finishes try not to relax too much if the examiner seems to be friendly and they're talking to you chatting to you um, still you've got to complete everything properly because they've got to mark you for the points that you are obviously scoring in order to pass your driving test so we hope that this video was helpful and uh, it will prevent a lot of people failing from you know doing some what we call little things but they are just as important as any other points that you need to score in the driving assessment so thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video